In this video, I will show you 10 tips and tricks you might find useful when designing a new PCB board layout in KiCad. I made quite a few designs during the last couple of years and I'm still learning new things in KiCad every day. But here I'll try and share some of the things I find useful during the PCB layout process. If you have some tips or ideas, then feel free to share them in the comments. Maybe we can collect new ideas to another video. Also look out for the next one with tips and tricks for making new symbols and footprints. Stop waffling and let's dig into it right away. Tip number one, origins and axis. So grid origin and axis are a bit special as default here in KiCad. So we see down here we have something called X and Y and we have DX and DY. So we see actually the 0, 0.0 point on the X and Y axis is actually up here in the top uh, left corner. But there are two ways that we can change it to something more understandable. So if we go down here in this corner and we would like to have this at 0, 0, we can just press the space bar for example. And then you see that the DX and DY goes to 0 down here. And we can move this relative zero point over here, or we can put it over here. But if we want the X and Y coordinates to start here down in the corner, then we can go to preferences and preferences. And then we have in the PCB editor origins and axis. Then we can move it from page origin to grid origin. And we want the y-axis to increase when we go up instead. Press OK. And then if we place grid origin and we put it down here, like so, then you see that it went to 0, 0.0 down here. And if we go out in the X direction, it goes positive. And if we go up in the Y, it also go positive. And if we go below, then it Y is negative. So that's a way to move the origins. Tip number two, rounded corners. So here I have a new design and I want to have an outline for the board. So I go to this Ed cuts layer and I want to place a rectangle around it. And this should be like 80 times 80 millimeters. Like that. And then I can highlight the net and then go to shape modification, fillet lines, and I want a radius of, let's say, yeah, 10 millimeters. You can see then the corners are rounded, but I want a smaller one. So I just select the net again, shape modification, fillet lines, and I want it to be four millimeters. And when you see here, if I move my pad here in the corner, like so, I can just remove the text here. And if we go to 3D Viewer, then we see we have some nice rounded corners here. Tip number three, draw rule area. If you need an area without any copper pores, as you see here in this example, around this relay, I have kept away all the copper pores. Then you go to place and draw rule areas. And here you can define an area where you want to keep away different things. We can just try and place one here, rule area properties. And for example, if we don't want to have copper pour in the top layer here, then we just deselect these ones and we keep out fill zone. Then we define the area like that. And then we update it. 
and then you see there's no copper pour in here and we can also just move this around and then we update again and then you see there's an area here where you kept away all the copper pours and for this one down here we can just see the rules for it so this is on layer the top layer inner layer in a layer two and the bottom layer and there we keep out of zone fills just another pro tip here if you for example want to have a cutout here in the pcb then you can go to edge cuts layer and then you can place a rectangle for example like that and if we go to the 3d viewer then you see there's a cutout here in the pcb tip number four schematic editor integration there's an integration between the pcb layout and the schematic so here we have both the schematic and the pcb layout open at the same time and if I select this part here, the USB connector, then the USB connector will be highlighted over here in the PCB layout. And the other way around, if I select this fuse, then you see the fuse is selected over here. And let's just try and take the ESP32, and then it gets highlighted here. And it even goes down to the level of each pad, so we can just select pads down here and if we want to look at a specific pad then let's highlight this one and then you can see this is highlighted over here in the schematic tip number five constraints it's possible to set up different constraints for your board this is done here if you say file and then board setup and then you go to design rules and then there's this constraints one of the more important ones is this copper to edge clearance you see right now i have a 0.5 millimeter i can just try and set this to one millimeter and then i can update the board here and then you can see I have a larger distance here from the copper fill to the edge of one millimeter now. So file, port setup, and constraints. And then there's see a different number of settings you can set up here. Tip number 5A. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Here I'll show you how easy it is to order your design directly from PCBWay using a KiCad plugin. So you simply go to Tools, External Plugins, and then down here we have the PCBWay plugin for KiCad. So when we execute this, this plugin will process all your data for the current design, and it will upload the necessary files to PCBWay. So here you can see it uh, uploaded the Kerber files, the bill of materials, and it detected the size of your board. And as usual, you can go in here and change all the different parameters. You can see it detected that uh, this is a four layer PCB and uh, the size of the board here. And of course you can change the colors and uh, the surface finish. So that's quite easy. Don't forget to check it out. And I would like to show you something over here. Uh, this is uh, Shad Projects. This is other customers from PCB Way. They upload their designs. And uh, you can directly go in and have a look on all the different designs and order the PCBs that they also order it. Uh, there's a lot of different categories. You can, for example, go to computers and USB. So. There's just a ton of different designs here that are quite interesting to look at. 
So don't forget to pay pcbway.com a visit. Tip number six, align text. Sometimes it becomes handy to align some text. So here in this example, I have this connector and I have some labels here uh, around the connector and I want it to look like the other ones here on the other side. So you go, just go to the selection filter here, disable everything and then just select text and then we just select everything and then right click on the mouse then we see this align distribute and we can for fun just take align to the left and then we can see they are nicely aligned here. So we want to align them uh, around the center here. So align to horizontal center and then we need the same distance in between them. Right click again align distribute and then we take distribute vertical by centers. There we have it and then we can just move them in here like that. Tip number seven, interactive router. The interactive router is also quite handy and you can use it in different modes. So if we have this net for example then you see when we come up to another track that's already been routed, then it cannot go through it. It will be, you know, it will go to there where the design rule is set. This is something called uh, walk around. So if we right click here on the mouse, then go to interactive router settings. So we can see we have this walk around mode. We can also select the one called shove. And then you see it will actually try to push away some of the tracks. We can also set another mode. This is highlight collisions. And that's when you come to an, a track where you can see there's a collision, then you will get a notification about that where there's a highlight here. Yeah, so check out the interactive router settings. Tip number eight, 3D models. The 3D viewer in KiCad is quite cool. So you just go to view and 3D viewer. And here you see your design in 3D. And we can just have a look here on the temperature and humidity sensor. So you just go to the footprint, double click. And here you see the 3D model for this specific part and you can just enable which one you want to show here and you can upload a new one. So 3D models, I like to find them at uh, two different places. Uh, the first one here is uh, Snap EDA. You just uh, insert the part number up here and then you get a list of different uh, parts and uh, some of them, they, they have a 3D model and you can simply just download this 3D model here and um, it, now it's already there, the HT31. Another source uh, for finding uh, these parts is also from uh, DigiKey directly. You can see here there's this EDA CAD models here. And you just double click here. And then you get also the same 3D model here. And you can then just select and then download it here and then select the step file and then download and then we got it so the last source for 3d models that i want to show you is uh, from weird electronic uh, you see there's this uh, this connector here and you can just go down here to downloads and then for the specific parts, then you see here, there's also a step file here. And this is something that they have for all the parts, so that's quite cool. 
So yeah, enjoy the 3D view. Tip number nine, net classes. Net classes, they come in very handy, especially when you have some nets that are different from the default ones. In this example, we look at a differential pair, a USB line, and we see that the signal, they require a larger clearance than the default ones. So we can use uh, net classes for setting this up. So this will be done automatically for us. So we go to file and board setup. And uh, here we go to design rules and net classes. And we see in here that we have the default net classes. And then I have specified a special one called diff pair USB. And we see here that uh, I need a clearance of 0.6 millimeters instead of the default 0.15 millimeters. And the track width here are the same. And then I have attached uh, these differential pairs to the to this uh, net class so that they will be routed using the diff pair USB net class. And just for fun, we can try and change this to a one millimeter like that. And then we can redraw it. And then you can see all the lines here have a larger clearance. Tip number 10, KiCat cheat sheet. In the video description down below, you can find a link to this KiCat cheat sheet. It's a very good thing having around when you make a new design and try and force yourself to use the hotkeys. They're really helpful. You see the hotkeys here and what they do over here. In this link, you will find a complete list of hotkeys. You can also find extensive support documents at docs.kicat.org. Head over to the PCB editor and check out the reference manual. Here on the right side, you see all the topics covered in this document. That's it for now. I really hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye.